Hello and welcome to this video on inhaled anesthetics, some basic concepts. This is a part of our series on CNS pharmacology. So in this video, we'll cover some basic concepts, potency, uh, blood solubility and onset of action, uh, the concept of arteriovenous gradient, drug distribution, redistribution and duration of action, and an overview of some commonly used anesthetics. So let's get into it. Before we start with anything else, let's look at these commonly used terms. What is anesthesia? Anesthesia is the loss of all sensation all together, which includes vibration, proprioception, temperature, crude touch, light touch, fine touch, two point discrimination, any sensation you can think of it gone in anesthesia. What is analgesia? Analgesia means the loss of nociception or the loss of pain. An example of that is acetaminophen, which you use for headaches for the relief of headaches because you want analgesia or the loss of nociception. Paresthesia is an abnormal sensation and the abnormal sensation which should not be present. For example, if you feel something touching the back of your hand when it's not actually there, then, that, that, then that's a paresthesia. For example, if you feel something hurting the back of your hand, if you feel an abnormal sensation which starts pinching the back of your hand, then it becomes a dysesthesia. That's a painful paresthesia. An example of that is the pins and needle sensation, which is common in diabetic neuropathy. Some basic concepts, the concept of solubility, which is divided further into blood solubility and lipid solubility. Lipid solubility decides your potency, but we'll talk about potency in a bit. Minimum alveolar concentration or MAC. You need to understand this. MAC is the concentration at which 50% of your subjects stop responding to painful stimuli on the use of an inhaled anesthetic. So minimum alveolar concentration. So you give, you're giving 100 patients. Let's say you take a group of 100 patients. You give them this anesthetic and you keep increasing this concentration just a little bit until, until like 50, until one goes to sleep, another goes to sleep, and another goes to sleep until you have 50 patients going to anesthesia, 50 patients becoming anesthetized. That is the minimum alveolar concentration. Time taken by anesthesia to set in is your induction time. Let's look at the concept of potency. What is potency? Potency is determined by the amount of drug required to achieve a certain effect. A higher, a potent drug requires lesser amount to achieve the same effect. A less potent drug which, uh, requires a greater amount to achieve the same effect. Let's look at these two drugs, drugs A and drugs B. So the desirable effect in this case is denoted by this dotted line. So you see this dotted line shows the desirable effect. We use the drug A, it achieves the same effect under this concentration, the concentration of let's say one, and then, then we start using drug B, it achieves the same effect at concentration two. So drug A achieves the same effect at a lesser concentration, which means drug A is more potent than drug B. You need to understand that. Drug A achieves the same effect at a lower concentration than drug B, therefore drug A is more potent. Potency is inversely proportional to MAC. What was MAC? MAC was the concentration required to anesthetize 50% of your subjects. So a highly potent drug, a highly powerful drug will require less amount to anesthetize the same patients. This is the concept of MAC or minimum alveolar concentration. And this is determined by the lipophilicity of your drug. The higher the lipid solubility, more potent that drug is. This determines your potency. Lipid solubility determines the potency. Like it's, let's look at the concept of blood solubility and onset of action. Let's take an example for that. So what happens is actually when you inhale an anesthetic, it moves from your lung. It moves into your lungs, into your alveoli from those really, really small sacs. So let's draw an alveolar. So from those really, really small sacs, it moves into your blood. And from the blood, you want it to go to your brain, right? You want it to, this is the best version of the brain that I could draw. So you want it to go to your brain. 
let's take an example of that how blood solubility relates so solubility blood solubility means how soluble the drug is in this in this compartment right so let's look at an example suppose you're sitting in the library you're having a particularly dull day you have this playstation on your table and you remember that you have to give this playstation to your friend so you give it to your brother because you can't move you have an exam tomorrow you can't move you give it to your brother you ask him take this playstation right now and go to my friend and go to his house and give him this thing right so what your brother does is if your brother is a huge fan of playstation he would want to keep it for some time he would want to hold the playstation for a day and then give it to your friend so this is exactly what happens in the blood so when you inhale an anesthetic it goes into your alveolus from your alveolus it goes into your blood only when the blood is completely saturated only when the blood only when your brother is done playing it goes into your brain and how quickly your friend gets that playstation depends on how less your brother like the playstation right so this is an alveolus an alveolus is filled with inhaled anesthetic from that it goes into your blood it fills up that blood and then this sort of a gate opens and then it goes to your brain but suppose we make that middle middle container just a bit smaller we make that container a bit smaller so that it fills this quicker let's take an example this is the alveolus blood gate this is the brain but right now the middle middle container is smaller so this container fills up more easily more quickly and quickly goes to your brain so that means in in drugs where the middle middle container is bigger or a highly blood soluble or a highly blood soluble anesthetic will take more time to go to your brain and a less blood soluble inhaled anesthetic will take less time to go to your brain thus a shorter induction time let's let's look at this again a highly blood soluble slower induction low blood soluble faster induction what's blood gas coefficient blood gas coefficient is nothing but your blood solubility blood solubility means your blood gas coefficient blood gas coefficient amount of gas dissolved in the blood divided by the amount of gas present in it its original gaseous form and the amount of gas dissolved in your blood determines on is determined by your blood solubility right so you can say a higher blood gas coefficient drug will have a higher blood solubility and therefore a slower induction time a lower blood gas coefficient drug will have a lower blood solubility and a faster induction time very interesting and very easy let's look at the concept of arterio venous gradient arterio venous gradient means the difference of the concentration of the drug present in your arteries minus the con and the concentration of your drug present in your veins that seems simple enough let's take an example we have these two examples we have 10 in the arteries in this example 10 is the concentration of the drug in the arteries and 2 is the concentration of your drug in the veins in this we have 10 and 8 so simply 10 minus 2 and 10 minus 8 in both of these example 10 minus 2 and 10 minus 8 this gives us 8 and this gives us 2 this this 8 is a high gradient this is a bigger amount this is a bit smaller amount right so a high gradient means a large number of a huge amount of the drug will leave that the will leave that blood compartment and a smaller av gradient a smaller arteriovenous gradient like this too means a smaller amount of drug will leave the blood so that means lower blood solubility drugs will have a higher av gradient higher blood solubility drugs will have a lower av gradient or the difference between the concentration in the arteries and veins will be lower in drugs that are low uh, that are low blood soluble that makes simple sense drug distribution and duration of action let's take an example for that this is an electric supply line 
it supplies two houses. One of these houses is a really, really shiny and big house, even with a garage with it. This is like testing my uh, drawing abilities to their limits. But it has this really, really thin electric wire, this really thin electric supply. As opposed to that, this smaller house has a very thick electrical supply. But what happens is that the smaller house thinks that maybe, maybe we're taking in too much electricity. So why not take some pity on the big guy and give some of it back? So it gives some of it back in a concept known as redistribution. Now, the main energy supply is known as your central compartment. From the central compartment, your drug moves to the ill-perfused peripheral compartment and your well-perfused peripheral compartment, right? So from the central compartment, you have drug entering the well-perfused peripheral compartment and ill-perfused peripheral compartment. What does well-perfused mean? Well-perfused mean more blood entering that area. Ill-perfused means less blood entering that area. What parts of your body are well-perfused? The important parts like your brain, your kidney, your lungs, so these important organs, these important organs are well perfused and the ill perfused compartment includes stuff like which is important, but obviously not that important stuff like your bones, your skeletal muscles, your uh, your fat. So these things, these things are perfused and they make a very huge part of your body. That's why the bigger house. But they're not that well perfused shown by the thing electrical. Wire. The small part of your body which includes the brain the kidney the highly perfused organs are highly are, are supplied highly and highly perfused by these thicker electrical supplies but some of the drug enters back so from the central compartment which is the blood we have the ill perfused peripheral compartment which includes the skeletal muscle the fat and the bone and the well perfused peripheral compartment which includes the brain the kidneys the liver and the lungs. So as we studied earlier, the thicker electrical supply, the thinner electrical supply, which just shows how much blood is entering these regions, the bigger house, the smaller house, which means the amount, which is basically how much of your body does do these areas make. So what happens is electricity re-enters, re-enters from the smaller or the well-perfused peripheral compartment to the ill-perfused peripheral compartment. But the thing is that in case of anesthetics, you want it to stay in the brain. You're doing an operation. You want it to stay to your brain. But what, what is happening is that from your brain, it is going into the skeletal muscle, fat and bone. So it's being redistributed. So you basically sometimes it, you want a longer duration of action of an anesthetic. So it's being redistributed. How do we control redistribution? And what, what determines the redistribution of a drug is its lipophilicity. A lipid soluble drug redistributes faster, thus will have a shorter duration of action because it will quickly leave the brain and enter the peripheral compartment. So a lipophilic drug redistributes faster and will have a shorter duration of action and a poorly lipid soluble drug redistributes slower and will have a longer onset of action sorry a longer duration of action pardon me if i said onset in the previous as well so a lipophilic drug will have a shorter duration of action and a poorly lipid soluble drug or lipophobic drug will have a longer duration of action let's look at an overview of some commonly used inhaled anesthetics so what's the mode of action of inhaled anesthetics how do they work so there is no specific receptor that has been identified that they bind this receptor and do this thing. What's a receptor? A receptor is present on the surface of a cell that controls how that cell responds to particular stuff that reaches it, right? So what happens is that this increases the activity. The inhaled anesthetics increase the activity of GABA-A. GABA-A is an inhibitory neurotransmitter receptor because GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. What's an inhibitory neurotransmitter and what's a receptor? Let's say your brain is releasing certain types of chemicals. These chemicals control how your brain responds. One of these chemicals is GABA. And what GABA does, GABA is basically an off switch. 
right kappa is an off switch you're trying to you're trying to turn off your sibling so that he doesn't respond to anything so this is basically gaba gaba this inhaled anesthetics increase the activity of gaba or that off switch so that your neurons stop responding and thus you have the depression of cns activity this is exactly what we want we want the depression of all sensation and thus anesthesia is achieved let's look at a comparison between two uh drugs and this will relate to what we studied earlier with blood with the concept of blood solubility the amount needed to saturate blood or basically blood solubility is high in halothane so halothane is highly blood soluble and n2o is low blood soluble so what it means is halothane has a bigger compartment in that drawing and n2o has a smaller compartment or a tiny compartment in that drawing so what happens is this bigger compartment will take more time filling up and thus will take more time to go to your brain the smaller compartment will take less time filling up and will be quicker going to your brain onset of action slow just like we talked about because it will reach slowly to your brain onset of action fast because it will reach very fast to your brain pardon equilibration with the brain which is basically how fast it reaches your brain it's the same thing as the onset of action if it reaches your brain very fast it will have a fast onset of action if it reaches your brain very slow it will have a slow onset of action or a slow equilibration with your brain now let's look at n2o n2o is low lipid soluble therefore it will have low potency it is low blood soluble therefore it has faster induction that means the central container is smaller just like we talked about a bit earlier so one of the things one of the post operative adverse effects of n2o is that it can cause expansion in the body cavity leading to things like uh, bowel distension and uh, it can also enter your middle ear cavities cavities that normally contain uh, nitrogen and therefore disrupt the pressures and therefore cause nausea and vomiting halothane is a highly blood soluble and lipid soluble drug therefore and it's also hepatotoxic therefore you remember halothane as highly blood soluble and hepatotoxic all of these things contain an h methoxyfluorine is nephrotoxic methoxy contains an x and nephrotoxic contains an x now let's look at the summary of all these concepts anesthesia is the loss of all sensations potency is the amount required to achieve a certain effect an effect which is shown by this dotted line at the concentration at which it achieves determines the potency of a drug and potency is determined by lipophilicity or how lipid soluble your drug is potency is inversely proportional to mac that means the amount required which the amount which is required to achieve that effect is lesser in highly potent drugs a highly blood soluble drug will have a longer onset of action a highly blood soluble drug means a bigger middle container so more time to reach your brain a longer onset of action a blood gas coefficient basically means which is the amount of drug dissolved in your blood uh, by the amount of blood uh, amount of gas which is present in your blood in its original form so it basically means blood solubility arteriovenous gradient means the amount of uh, the drug which is present in the artery minus the vein basically determined by your blood solubility lipophilic drugs or lipid soluble drugs redistribute faster and vice versa thank you that was all for inhaled anesthetics and some basic concepts let me know in the comments if you like the video and what more would you like to learn